Hey, all you Google score maze, and I apologize for Sammy howling in the background. Evidently, he does not like my movie Munchies intro because he howls every time it plays. So, um, so welcome to the next movie Munchies. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you how to make Annie Wilkes Misery Meatloaf and Rum Punch Cockadoodie Cocktails. Now, I have the uh, Done you the service of already mixing up the, the rum punch cocktails. Um, as you can see, I have created a logo that is Annie Wilkes from the movie. Um, I just doctored the, uh, it up a little bit and put Annie Wilkes handcrafted cockadoody cocktails on the logo. I've also made some pig's head stirs instead of buying them from amazon i've made my own um and it's, it does say misery approved and that's referring to misery the pig and the film misery uh, i have also put uh, on the stir i've also put three maraschino cherries you can also put uh limes and oranges and whatever fruit that you want um and i have also taste tested this i'm going to tell you what you need to put in this uh and just to show you that it doesn't taste bad i'll take a sip on camera so before we get into the meatloaf um what do we need to make these rum punch cocktails now the recipe i used um called for two cups of pineapple juice um, two cups of orange juice. Now, I guess I probably didn't use true orange juice, but I have found that the original tangy um, Sunny D is really good in, in any kind of uh, fruity alcoholic drinks you would make, any kind of party punch you would make. Uh, it works really well. So I had two cups of that. Uh, you need a fourth of a cup of lime juice, and I reference, I just use some uh, Kroger brand lime juice. They recommend you use fresh squeezed lime juice. So if you have a lime, you know, sitting around your kitchen, or you want to actually purchase a lime and squeeze the juice out of there, you just need a fourth of a cup. You also need a cup and a half of rum. Now, they suggest that you use, I guess, for the most full body flavor, they suggest you use a dark rum. I only had light rum, and to tell you the truth, I wasn't uh, uh, looking to buy any more rum right now. Um, and I may, I didn't know that my tablet's battery level was down. I may have to go get the. Uh, power cord to actually plug this in so you know it doesn't go out on but i'll do that in just a second um so uh you put a cup and a half i had coconut uh rum which i like and it tastes really good in the drink so i put a cup and a half of that in there and i mixed it this makes approximately two quarts so if you have a pitcher that size or larger, you can just mix all the stuff in there. And uh, so also, um, I got maraschino cherries that I put in on my um, on my stirrer that I created. So this is just Kroger brand maraschino cherries with no stems, which makes it a lot easier when you're doing these for drinks. Um, and uh, also to put in your glasses before you put the rum punch, um, this is on the house grenadine syrup. And you put a tablespoon of that in the bottom of your glass before you pour the rum punch in there. And that's basically all there is to that rum punch recipe. You could also make that a virgin one. You wouldn't have to put the alcohol in it if you did not wish to. 
So um, there's multiple ways that you can make that. So that's how you make the uh, rum punch cocktail. Now, I am going to remove myself really quickly here, and I'm going to go get my power cord so that everything doesn't go dark. And then we'll get into making this meatloaf. Okay, so now I'm back. I have the tablet plugged in and currently charging so that everything won't go away. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add the haunted food cam here. And you can see that I have my spam already in the bowl. I've tried to get really much, much better about getting this stuff measured beforehand so we can just mix it together so what all do we need to make this heat loaf and i'm going to go ahead and get my ground beef out of the grill. i've had it in the refrigerator so i got ready to do this so we need a pound of ground beef you can use whatever you know brand of ground beef you want this is the kroger brand of ground beef and i know ground beef is high because around here it's about usually about five or six dollars for a pound of ground beef. So we need that. We also need now they say 10 ounces of spam in this recipe, but I could not find 10 ounce spam uh, 10 ounce containers of spam. This is 12 ounce, so I said, what the hey, I'll have an extra two ounces. Uh, so this is the classic spam. Now, the lady that did this recipe used black pepper spam. Now, if you can find black pepper spam at your local grocery store, then I say definitely go for it. Um, but I was not able to find that, so I just went on and got the classic spam. We also need one egg. And I use uh, large, um, these are uh, cage-free chicken eggs. They're brown. Farm fresh eggs is another term for them, but I like to use these. Now, I used to use just regular eggs, but I found that these are much richer and, and better for my needs. Hey, Blissful. Um, I also need one medium onion dice. Now, I cheated a little bit. I've got about a cup of uh, diced onions here or chopped. And what I did, when I say I cheated, I didn't actually get an onion and cut it up. Uh, Kroger's has these uh, recipe beginnings, chopped onions. They have, you know, chopped peppers and a bunch of different other items like that. So I just got a bag of uh, these recipe beginnings, chopped onions. And I measured out about a cup, which I figured for my needs, that's going to be about right. Now, you need a half a cup of Italian style bread crumbs. Now, again, this can be your preference for whatever type of Italian bread crumbs you want. I've got Progresso Italian style bread crumbs. And remember, you don't have to get a very big container because you only need half a cup. And uh, we also need one medium tomato, finely diced. And uh, I'm going to uh, make the haunted food cam the solo layout a second so that you can see that I have cut up a tomato. This is a fresh tomato. Uh, but I also have, again, I cheated a little bit. These are Hunt's fire roasted uh, diced tomatoes. 
like to use them in a lot of different recipes. So I've got that. And we also need a fourth of a cup of ketchup. And you don't really have to measure that out, uh, so to speak, um, because what we're going to do with this ketchup here, this is Hunt's, Hunt's tomato ketchup. You get whatever your favorite type of ketchup is. We're going to squirt it out and write misery on top of the meatloaf before we cook it. Okay. And we also need a tablespoon of minced garlic. And I just got Spice World uh, minced garlic here. And you can get it with or without olive oil. This kind I've got right now doesn't have the olive oil. But I like either one. It's just sometimes if I see the, the, uh, all, the kind with olive oil, I will get that. So they tell you to mash the Spam with a fork. Now, I had a hard time with my fork mashing this up. So I actually got, you know, use clean hands only. But I got my hands in there. And I actually mashed this up. And then I kind of took the fork and just kind of mashed it up a little bit more. Because as you know, if you've seen Spam, it comes in a big cube like in the can. Um, so we mashed our Spam with a fork. And now we're going to put all the other ingredients into uh, in with the uh, Spam here. So we're going to go ahead and put our ground beef in here. And just to a funny little note, Steve did not realize that I was going to be putting spam in this. And I think he was a little turned off by that. But I'm curious to see how this is. Because I remember liking spam as a kid. I haven't eaten spam in a long time. So again, you know, clean hands only, guys and gals. I'm just going to get my hands in there and do this the old school way and get that spam mixed in with the ground beef really good. Okay. You know, actually, this is how some people mix their meatloaf. Now, I know the meat is cold, the ground beef, because you've either had it in the freezer and defrosted it or you've had it in the refrigerator thawing, which is what I did. I knew I was going to be using this, so yesterday when I brought it home, instead of putting it in the freezer, I just put it in the refrigerator. I thought I'm going to be using it in a day, so so we're going to get that mixed up real good. Hey, Kathy, you say it looks good so far? <laughs> I hope it tastes tastes good too. I'm, you know, I actually I haven't had any kind of meatloaf in a while. Kind of looking forward to this. I think we just about got that all. Some swine of over here. Okay, and I'm going to wipe, wipe my hand off a little bit. So we have got, um, this will you say your dad loves Spam and your mom made a sandwich prep for him? Yeah, a lot of people, you know, I was actually surprised uh, the other night or maybe it was last night when I was talking about it. People were, a lot of people were talking about how much they like Spam. And I was kind of shocked because I didn't think too many people were fans of Spam. So, and now we're going to put the rest of our ingredients in here. So we're going to put our egg in here. Be, uh, be careful of the egg shells. Try not to uh, get any egg shells in your 
me glow. I can tap into the back of this so that we've got an egg shells in there one time or another. So we've got our egg in there. Um going to put uh, our Italian braid crumbs in there. We'll put um, tomatoes in there. And again, I'm going to just take a break to get my hands in there. You know, I actually think that you have more control over the mixing of the ingredients when you get your hand in there when it's something like meatloaf especially you know you can get you can dig in there i know that probably looks disgusting to some people like to to watch somebody get their hands in there and raw meat essentially and be mixing up all these ingredients but like i said again you have more control over it if you get your hands in there can get in there and squish all that stuff together. Okay, so we're going to put, put some our tomatoes in there. We're going to have plenty of tomatoes, which I think is going to make this good. I can hear people saying, ew, gross right now. He probably would be if he was in here. And I'm seeing, too, that I probably needed a bigger bowl, so. On site, I make this again. That's a bigger bowl. <laughs> Steve's in there, I think, watching the new newest Aquaman movie. Hey, y'all wonder what any of that is in there. Our um, because they are frozen. I had them like out, kind of defrosted a little bit. Even though it's kind of freezing my hand off. Another reason you might need a bigger bowl because stuff starts like as you're mixing it around. It kind of wants to fall out of there, but. Then uh, I'm going to wipe my hands off just a little bit. And I may, since the last thing I'm putting in here is the uh, garlic. Uh, oh, well, bless Jay's heart. He's always, you know, he's my biggest supporter in a lot of things, you know, with my streams, you know, with my cooking. So I, I really appreciate him saying that. You know, sometimes I try things out and they don't exactly turn out the way I wanted them to. But, you know, that goes with the territory. Okay. This <laughs> 
says, Kathy, she's a good cook. Jay gets the munchies, especially around last Christmas day and made everyone hungry. Yeah, I do have a bad habit of doing that. All right, so I can see drop the remote in there. So we're going to put a tablespoon of our minced garlic in here. Get a big dollop of that garlic. Now, for those of you that don't like garlic or pricing, ooh, it's gross. So I think I am going to take this fork a little bit and get that. <laughs> My hand's about to turn into a foxy. Try to get that garlic mixed up. Okay, so I have my oven that's preheated to 350 degrees, and I also have my loaf pan that I've sprayed with Pam. Now, we're going to see, I may have to use both loaf pans. I may make two batches of meatloaf, because that looks like a lot of meatloaf there, but uh, we're going to see we can do here i'm just gonna kind of so i can shape it a little bit i'm gonna start putting some of this in the loaf pan and if you don't have a loaf pan that doesn't nothing says that you can't just shape it into a loaf and put it in a baking dish i can say i think everybody pretty much knows that right Might be able to fit all this in one loaf pan. Yeah. We'll squish it down real good. I mean, even though I, you know, I'm sure it's going to smell better after, even better after it's cooked. But actually, the ingredients in here smell really good. Before we even uh, start cooking it. And wipe my hands off again and move that bowl out of our way here. You can see the fruits of my labor there. So it wasn't really hard. That's probably about the easiest meatloaf I've ever put together, honestly. Kind of press it down, make it even here. So you ladies that have men or other members of your family that really like meatloaf, this might be something to, to try out on them, see, see how they like this version of meatloaf. Trying to even this out just a little bit. All right. Pretty good. Off some of the excess here. 
and I'm cleaning up as I go along. That's something my mom always taught me. Uh, so now we're going to take our let's catch up. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to write misery on here. Ooh. You know how it comes out liquidy sometimes when you first uh, do that? So. I'm not the best here, and I think I kind of ran out of room. I started. <laughs> I didn't do this too good, I thought. It's kind of a little bit hard to do this. You know what? I think this girl is just going to fix her mistake here. We'll just have a little extra ketchup. Kind of hard to use these bottles of ketchup, like these bottles like I have. Wouldn't do any writing with them. Let's try this again, shall we? So let's start way over here. <laughs> I tell you, this uh, model of ketchup is not. cooperating with me here um well you know what guys and gals i think i'm gonna give up on that <laughs> you know um i what i'm gonna suggest is if you want i'm gonna wipe off some of this because we don't need all um i'm gonna suggest that if you want to write misery on top of your meatloaf um to get one of those old-fashioned ketchup containers put some ketchup in it and do it that way i think it's going to be much easier i think i probably would be would have been able to succeed with that if i hadn't had a big bottle of ketchup so what i'm going to do the ketchup that i do have I'm going to just spread it on top. We can just say that's like blood. Okay. <laughs> How about that? Um, but if you do have one of the old fashioned ketchup containers, I think you, you will be able to successfully write misery on top if you want to. We're just going to smooth this out. Okay. I was starting to run out of ketchup, but I thought that was something else. I thought I had plenty of ketchup. And I may have had, well, we had habanero ketchup as well, but I don't know. I don't know about using the habanero ketchup for it. All right. Uh, Kathy, you said one of the reasons I enjoy your streams, I, I learned something new. Well, that's that's always good. I, I love that. Um, and Blissful, you said, Kathy, same with me. Oh, I skipped one. Blissful says, this recipe looks good. I'll have to try it also. I have a recipe where you make a meatloaf and add mashed potatoes around it and bake it together. Yeah, that would be good, too. I actually have. Um, because Steve just didn't want to eat just meatloaf. So I told him that we would eat this for the coming week. But I've got petite medley gourmet potatoes. Um, and also, Steve likes fried corn. Which, if you've never made fried corn, 
Ask me about that because I kind of created my own recipe that I really like. And so we're going to have potatoes, roasted potatoes, and fried corn with our meatloaf ultimately. Uh, Kathy said, I, th I would think the spam would act as a binder for both meats. I'm not a good cook, but I am learning. Well, you know, if you're willing to learn, I think that's a positive step forward. Yeah, and I agree with Kathy that Blissful, your recipe sounds very good as I, I am a potato fan. I'm a fan of potatoes, too. Uh, Blissful says, Kathy, I love the idea. I found the recipe on an online site for recipes from the 50s to the 80s. All right, so we've got our oven preheated to 350 degrees. And so I'm going to go ahead. and. Pop this boy, girl, whatever you want to call it, into our preheated oven. And we're going to cook this for 60 to 75 minutes. And usually what I do, because I know all ovens, and I'm going to exit the solo layout. Make me the solo layout for a second here. Um, what I like to do is I err on the side of caution with my oven, and I just set it for the the longest time. So, oops. So this is going to be what about an hour and fifteen minutes here, if you set it for the maximum time period. All right, and I've got that cooking now. And I also, when I do that, I make sure to check it every once in a while to make sure it's not getting too done. Um, hey, Jimmy, you say, what's up, my horror movie family? Popped in to say hello, Dana, Blissful, and chat. I want to, I want meatloaves now. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. You're welcome, Jimmy. Um, Kathy says, after years of living with others that cook, I moved out on my own last month, so it's fun collecting recipe books. I absolutely love recipe books. In fact, because there are so many recipes online that I have been collecting over time that I have created my own binder recipe book. Um, where I have things divided up into appetizers and snacks. I have, you know, uh, beef and pork recipes. I have uh, Asian recipes, bread, soups, uh, pasta, chicken recipes, uh, fish recipes, just all kinds different things that i've collected and i just keep adding to with if my binder i also have a pioneer woman recipe box that i've added recipes to to as well thank you blissful you said Dana, that's a beautiful book um uh, blissful says kathy the best recipe recipe books i've found is taste of home i haven't tried a dud in any books uh almost willing to bet you could i i mean i I'll, t I'll take a minute and tell you guys what i do because when steve and i first got married he talked about fried corn that his grandmother used to make and i was like well i you know i really like to try my hand at some fried cornbread so i looked at several different recipes and they never turned out the way either one of us wanted them to and so, you know, this is when I was still working part time. And so I would just experiment with different things when I had time. So I just got out my iron skillet one day. And I took some frozen uh, corn that Steve's mom had given us. She freezes corn and puts it into, you know, big plastic bags. And uh, she'll give some to us from time to time. Uh, when am I watching a uh, creep show, Jimmy? Uh, well, you know, 
I'm not really sure. Uh, I'll have to look and see if I have that on my list of upcoming ones. If I don't have it, uh, I will be sure to add it. Um, Kathy, you say you eat very little fried foods, a diabetic. Now, I probably should. I'm diabetic too, so I should be doing that, but I don't. <laughs> but so anyway, here's how I make my fried corn. So I take a big bag of egg pill. I'll just show you guys and gals. My mother in law gives me these big gallon bags or whatever of corn that she's just taken off the cob and, and frozen. So I'll take a bag of that. I'll put it in my cast iron skillet. I put uh, about a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of butter. Um, I put milk in there to almost cover the corn. You know, you don't want to overfill your skillet or whatever you're using to cook it in. Uh, and then I put a load, a load. And if I have extra bacon grease around, I'll put about a tablespoon of bacon grease in it too. But I, this is what I put a lot of in my fried corn. I put as much as me and Steve can stand in the fried corn. Um, so I'll put a I'll sprinkle it over the top of the corn initially then i will turn the skillet on medium heat and i will basically cook it until um the milk's pretty much absorbed and the corn is nice and thick and i will taste test it in between and and see if it needs more pepper if it needs more pepper i will sprinkle some more pepper in there known to to also put a little bit you might not want to go crazy <laughs> of uh cayenne red pepper i'll just sprinkle a little bit in that in there as well but that's basically all there is to it to my fried corn this is dana's fried corn now nothing says you couldn't put it in an iron skillet and stick it in the oven uh, I, I wouldn't know how long to tell you to cook it, what temperature, but probably I wouldn't put it on a very high temperature and just keep cooking it. Um, I probably wouldn't go over 400 degrees with cooking. Uh, I'd stay probably around the 350, 400, and I would just keep checking on it until you notice that the milk has been absorbed and it's, you know, um, pretty well, uh, you know, thickened up and all that stuff. And then you can give it a good stir. Uh, you can taste test it, see if you need to add more black, black pepper or whatever. And, you know, if you did want to fry it in the skillet and you wanted to make it less, you know, fattening and all that stuff, then by all means, don't use real butter. You could use uh, margarine. Or something like that or something that's low fat butter substitute i can't believe it's not butter you can use whatever you want um kathy said thanks i wrote that down i got a couple of pioneer woman's baking dishes that can't go over 350 so i think i'm good for it then thanks you are very welcome i always like sharing uh, ideas with people to help them out so guys and gals um this has got to cook for over an hour so i don't want to keep you guys in here all the time this thing is cooking so i think what we're going to do is do what we did last time and then what i did was i went back into the original video this of course was the shakma infused gorilla bread and i have a new brand new uh moving munchies commercial and so I go back and I add that in there and I cut out, you know, where I was doing the cooking and I wasn't actually on here talking. That way, you know, people want to watch the original break. Um, if they want to watch just me, you know, cooking it or getting the stuff mixed together, putting it in the oven and then seeing the finished product when it comes out, 
including the movie Munchies commercial. I'm planning on making some more different commercials uh, as well. So you're just not watching the movie Munchies all the time. Um, so I am going to step away for a little bit, take myself and the haunted food cam out of the stream. Uh, and I should be back in about an hour and five minutes. So I will see you guys in a little while. Y'all go have fun and come back in about an hour. And uh, we'll see how this meatloaf turned out. Yes, Phil, basically milk, corn, and pepper. And, and butter. Or a butter substitute. But I will see you guys in about an hour.
All right, guys, I'm back a few minutes early. I hope that doesn't throw anybody off. Yeah, uh, there, slide the screen down a little bit. Um, and I'm going to bring up the haunted boot cam and make that solo layout so you can see the fruits of my labor. Here is the Annie Wilkes Misery Meatloaf. Um, I cooked it a little bit less um, than it said was the longest time. I, I'd say I cooked it about an hour and 10 minutes instead of an hour and 15. Um, so it appears that everything is all done, that the ground beef is done, and all of that uh, looks nice and brown on top. And um, so if you are going to be transferring it out of your baking dish onto a serving platter, um, they recommend you wait 10 minutes, let it cool for 10 minutes in the pan, and then put it on your serving platter. Now, I think that I am going to leave mine in the low pan um, to help it retain its shape and all that. But I I am also going to give a few minutes for people to get back in here that want to see it. Uh, otherwise, you can watch it on the replay. Like I said, I will be uh, making an edited version uh, where I put the movie Munchies commercial in um, to, you know, not have this long stretch of time where there's nothing going on while this stuff is being baked. Um, so that people can see, either see the original and they can just simply fast forward through that or they can watch the edited version, which has that big chunk of time where something was baking replaced with a few minute commercial. OK. So. Um, I will, like I said, I'll stay on here and allow time for people to get back to see what the meatloaf looks like. Um, again, I'll, I'll uh, exit the solo layout on this for just a second to um, I'll make myself the solo layout for a second. Just so I can show you the cups. The cups, I bought these pink cups. Uh, from the Dollar Tree uh, yesterday, and I was like, yeah, this will be a cool idea, and then I made the little logo that is actually Annie Wilkes from the movie, one of the scenes from the movie. I just doctored it up using some software, um, and that actually says, I know it's hard to read the bottom part, but it actually says Annie Wilkes handcrafted cockadoody cocktails, and um, also, I made my own pig's head stirs. That does say misery approved on there. So instead of buying these, I made, uh, made my own. Um, and uh, if you want to go back, and I don't actually physically show you how to make the rum punch cocktails, but I tell you what you need to put in them. Again, the recipe that I used makes two quarts, about two quarts. And uh, this is about eight ounces in these these cups, uh, which is a serving, which is what I consider a serving. So I've only had one of these. I might have another one a little bit later. But you can pair, you know, the rum punch cocktails with the meatloaf. Uh, or you can use, I, th I think they had wine or champagne or something like that on Misery. If you want to do that and you like that better than a, than a fruit-based cocktail, then by all means, use your favorite uh, uh, beverage of choice, even if that's non-alcoholic, which is fine. Um, and um, also... Uh, I promised Steve that I would make some additional food items to go with our misery meatloaf. Uh, I am going to, I'll show this again. I'm going to be making some roasted potatoes. These are petite medley gourmet potatoes. There's gold, red, and purple mini potatoes in there. 
So I'm going to roast those with some seasoning. And I'm also going to be making fried corn, which run this back a little bit if you're watching this on the replay. And I tell basically my recipe for fried corn. So you can also have rolls with this. You could have mashed potatoes with it. I know earlier, Blissful said she had found a recipe where you cook the mashed potatoes with um, the meatloaf. I think that's a wonderful idea. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. You don't just simply have to eat meatloaf. I think in the movie, they had a side salad. So if you want to have a side salad, um, that is fine as well. I mean, meatloaf will go with a lot of different things. It's a... Uh, it, it's a versatile dish, in my opinion. Um, which uh, I got a couple more minutes of cooling for this. And then for the sake of you guys and gals that are in here or that have come back to see how this turned out, I will add that, uh, add the uh, meatloaf back. Um, so again, that you guys and gals can see how this turned out. Um, so you don't have to look at my ugly mug. We'll make uh, the meatloaf the actual uh, solo layout. My phone went dead while I was cooking the meatloaf, so I am uh, in the process of charging it right now. Um, but uh, like I said, in about a minute and a half, I will cut a slice of this meatloaf and we will try it. Uh, and uh, hopefully it won't be horrible. I don't think it's going to be horrible, but, you know. Uh, and two, I wanted to reiterate, if you want to write the word misery on the top of the meatloaf, which it didn't turn out too good for me, I ended up spreading the, the ketchup out over top of the meatloaf. Um, if you want to write it, I would suggest you use those old-fashioned ketchup dispensers with the, the really small nozzle on them to enable you to write misery on the top of it, uh, which I think that'll look really cool. Um, you know, you could write misery or put misery on there with the diced tomatoes. You know, there's a lot of different ways you could have put misery on there. <laughs> you could maybe even alternate between a tomato and a, a piece of onion. Uh, yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways that you could do that if you wanted to. So we got about 15 seconds or so, and then I'm going to cut me a slice of this. My plate. Oops, sorry about that. I'm actually going to get out. What's my timer? I'm actually going to get out my how hot this is. I think I can actually turn around without burning myself. I've got my owl plate here. And um, we'll get a knife and we'll we'll slice a little piece of the cheek up. Right. And hopefully I put enough ham in here where it will not stick. That's my hope. I'm also trying not to scratch my pan. They they are scratched a little bit. I've had them oh over time so we get this out of here. Yeah, that does look nice and done there. <laughs> Just so you guys and gals don't think I'm afraid to come on camera as I taste this. Will make me the uh, solo layout here. 
I thought it's very good. I actually think that's some good meatloaf. Like I said, I haven't had meatloaf. And you can see the steam coming off of this. So even though I let it cool for 10 minutes, um, it's still pretty hot. So be really careful if you're taste testing this. But uh, yeah. And the tomatoes mixed in there is really good. The tomatoes and the onions and all of that. It's got a nice, probably if I cooked it a little bit longer, the top would have been a little more crusty with the ketchup. So if you like your top of your meatloaf a little more crusty, then by all means cook it um, to the to the full length of 75 minutes. I'm really liking it. <laughs> So, there you have it, guys and gals. There is the Annie Wilkes Misery Meatloaf with Rum Punch Cockadoodie Cocktails. I want to thank you guys and gals for joining me this afternoon as I navigated through yet another Movie Munchies. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you like the content that I'm putting out here, the, the Movie Munchies, the watch-alongs, the the retrospectives or whatever, please like and subscribe. Share my channel name with your friends and family members that you think would be interested in. Um, I, you know, it's not, again, it's not all about getting a bunch of subscribers. What it is, is about providing content to people that they can enjoy. And uh, so that's why, that's the ultimate reason why i'm telling people to like and subscribe and share with friends and family members and uh i guess that's it for me uh be sure to join me if you're interested in the watch along tonight starting at 7 p.m eastern time for pretty woman uh next week's watch alongs as a reminder will be the thing john carpenter's the thing on saturday and Sunday will be The Wedding Singer starring Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. So uh, be sure to be on the lookout for that. I also have another Stephen's Kingdom coming up on Monday starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And a brand new stream that will be uh, taking place on Tuesday evenings called Everybody Wants England. And uh, going to be covering uh, Robert England's filmography. So I'm going to be covering three movies a night uh, that Robert England was in. And uh, so I hope you guys and gals all enjoy that. Plus, uh, you regulars will know that usually on Wednesdays, barring anything happening, me and TJ will be back with uh, another episode discussion for Tales from the Crypt Season 7 going to start off the first uh, seven or eight episodes of season seven and uh, Thursday will be another seductive poison the resurgence Friday afternoon starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time will be another midday with Dana and Jay and don't ask me because I don't know what we're going to do it on I never know uh, but I'm sure we'll, me and Jay uh, we'll try to come up with something that we can keep you entertained doing. Um, and then, of course, the watch-alongs this weekend for The Thing and Wedding Singer. So you guys and gals take care. I'm going to skedaddle on out of here for now. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.